Okay, hello and welcome to another episode of Hiring and Inspiring. Today's guest is the one and only Danny Garinoni, <laughs> otherwise known as Danny Chi. Danny is, well, firstly, uh, an old friend uh, and also a fellow sales professional, very passionate about what he does uh, and, and an all round great bloke who's very um, you know, inspiring to be around and uh, I always love when we catch up. So it's been a while. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what he's got to say. What here is what he's been up to. Find a bit more about um, you know his journey since uh, since we last caught up, and no doubt for him to share some wisdom. So, Danny, Danny with that introduction, that introduction mate, mate, welcome to welcome the show. How are you getting on? Joe, thank you. I've been been really really well, and thanks for the kind words as as uh, usual. Uh, I've been great. I've been living the dream. You know. To, trying to motivate myself, trying to push myself, and ultimately, you know, sharing connections, trying to build my network, and hopefully tackle on the challenges about this crazy world we're living in. All these, you know, constant change, these interesting moments that are keeping us on our toes. That's for sure. Cool. And mate, it's probably been. I was thinking about it. It's probably been a couple of years since we probably, you know, last caught up. Um, what's been what's been going on in the, in the world of Danny G in the last couple of years? Oh, the life of Danny G. It's always <laughs> interesting. Um, well, let's just say my career has been a bit of a wild ride um, okay. in terms of unexpected detours, some twists and turns. And I believe when we last spoke, I was a partner relations advisor. So where that was where I honed my skills in building relationships. Um, with you know it's esteemed partners for as i say and i was like uh you would like to call the smooth talking diplomat lodging the gap between our company and theirs so but then life had other plans for me so i was there for uh two three years you know developing those skills and those attributes and i found myself catapulted into the world of account management and uh, basically, I was, it was like waking up in a different planet, wearing a spacesuit made of spreadsheets and contracts. Suddenly, I had to juggle multiple accounts like a professional circus performer bouncing f like a flaming bowling pin. And in the end, I think I found my new calling as an account manager where I get to forge deep connections with clients, tame the wildest of account demands. It's been a, th a thrilling journey, and I can't wait to see where the next loop or hurdle takes me, that's for sure. Love it. Mate, so you mentioned it's been a bit of an unexpected twist for you to go from the partner role to the account manager. How did that come about? Well, at Symbio, and I'll talk a bit more about uh, my company uh, later on, I started from, the, I would say, the very bottom of sales where I was doing relentless cold calling where I was, you know, going in day to day. I was taking in maybe 40, 50 calls a day and then sometimes I was, you know, making outbound calls uh, just depending on, on how busy it was. And I, I couldn't, at the time I was, I would say, very, very hungry and very more and more keen to develop those sort of phone skills, people skills, and that really was unexpected because I always wanted to, my passion has always been sport and in particular football, and I always pictured myself being a commentator or being a, a coach or being some sort of writer doing blogs or vlogs and that was always a, a dream of mine because I always wanted to be involved in, in sport and, and that aspect of it. However, when I was at uni and when I graduated from those roles, I believe, I wouldn't call it a mistake, but I made a realization that I was mixing business with too much pleasure and I was and there's that fine line that you don't re necessarily want to be working to a complete passion every single day cuz when i when i'm in sales now you know sometimes i like to wind down and i'll i'll come back home just to relax and i'll be watching football highlights but if i'm watching football highlights for example at work every single day to day i feel like a lot of the sting and a lot of the 
excitement would be would be taken out of it a bit like VAR but we won't get into that so no it was it was always that that change that was always uh scary for me and I know that my parents were always telling me you know we want you to you know be happy and you know continue with with what you want to do and you know we'll always support you so I had that good backing from them and it wasn't you know oh you're not using you know sometimes I get messages or I get um, just comments saying, oh, you know, you never used your your full degree in, in your current role. And then I, I said, yeah, correct, I, I didn't. You, you always got to, you know, own up to it and you always got to be sure of that. But at the end of the day, I, I, I definitely learned some skills from that degree and I learned and I got to know an amazing amount of people through through it all. And I I am where I am right now and I don't regret it. I think just on that last thing you said about the the degree, you work in sales, there isn't, you actually can't study sales, there isn't a degree for sales. So everyone who works in sales, if they have a degree, has a de- majority of the time, unless it may be psychology, I think, but majority mm. have, a, have a degree then it isn't actually relevant to their, their current profession, including myself. Um, <laughs> well, that's a great, that's an absolutely great point. And to be honest, I'd also argue that sales, it should be a, some sort of a degree because I do believe sales is such an important part of your life, whether you're using it literally or metaphorically um, even in the dating world right now if you're ever using dating apps you know you, you kind of have to sell yourself to the lady or to that poten- <laughs> to that to that potential prospect you know <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta really make sure that you're providing that sort of confidence and you're using yourself as a product for example you you know you want to you know it's it's hard to set it's hard to become attractive if you don't sell how good or how amazing of a of a potential that you've got. I always, I always say this, but like it's life is sales. Whatever you're doing, you know, you don't even say you're trying to even just convince your mate to come for a pint with you on a Saturday night. Like you're, <laughs> you're selling, right? You know, <laughs> everything you do. Um, you know, life is a is a game of sales, as I always I always think. So. Oh, hundred percent. I I completely agree as well. It's. Always trying to convince that last mate <laughs> to make to make that last attendance, even if they've just gone out the night before, or <laughs> just even if they're not keen or just want to have a lazy day, and you, you manage to find the right words to convince them, and and then it's crazy how those little moments, and then they end up having the best night of their life, or they end up meeting that special person, and then you you always think to yourself, I was an amazing salesperson that day, and I made a difference. <laughs> mate, you're selling to me. I want to go on a night out with you now. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to your back to your role in your company. So that progression into the account management position. Tell me a bit more about what exactly you're doing in that role, what you're selling, how you're helping your customers. Sure. So at Symbio Networks, uh, it's all about connecting the dots, both literally and metaphorically. So we're a te- telecommunications and software company that specialises in providing VoIP or voice over IP and cloud communication services to businesses and service providers. So in simpler terms, what does that mean? I'm sure many are wondering. So it's like, we're basically like the phony superheroes of the communication world. So we swoop in to save the day by offering a range of innovative solutions that make communication smoother than a budded phone line, for example. So our main offerings include VoIP services that let businesses make and receive calls over the internet. So if you're wondering that on a more personal use, have you ever, Joe, have you ever used um, Messenger to make or receive calls, for example? Rarely, I would say. Rarely. So there are instances where maybe you're, you know, talking to someone and you, you, you know, you press that phone or that video option and then that's that's basically void basing uh, using the internet to make the calls if you're not connecting through to Wi-Fi so it's kind of the way that is it's it's a lot cheaper um, than you know connecting through you know a standard um, phone line and it's it's just very scalable and, e- and easy to manage so it makes communication um, quite simple and it makes it um, ready to go and I was lucky to be in um, in this particular position and in this industry because it is an essential service and during the lockdown that we faced a couple of years ago, 
I was lucky enough to be working from home and, you know, I was fortunate not to be losing any jobs or I had to potentially move from a full-time to a part-time role. And some of the um, services that we offered actually bloomed uh, during that time. And it's crazy to think how much the world has changed since then in, in, in my industry because nowadays, there's so many people working from home, myself included, and the nature of how we use the internet or how we use our mobile phone has changed and is changing so much, I believe. And your role is predominantly looking after like customers' existing accounts you have? Yeah, exactly. So mostly growing an existing portfolio of accounts. So yeah. it's, um, f when I was in the partner relations advisor role, I was more looking at, let's say, 300 accounts. It was a massive amount of businesses and they all uh, scaled in, in revenue. And at the moment, I'm more managing around 50, 50 partners. So that's that's going to be more prevalent in the next month where I'll have a, a new set because um, of the end of the financial year. So at the moment, it's just growing those existing accounts organically through new services, for example, mobiles, um, NBN services, Microsoft Teams has been very big and just even further products on the mobile side, which maybe I'll touch on a little bit later. Yeah, and it seems like you're loving it, mate, and doing really well. What do you, what, what sort of things, like skills or attributes, do you think you sort of bring to the table or, or things that you've done that have allowed you to have success in the company and also in that, in that role? Well, the skills that I believe you need to be a salesperson or in this particular role is you, it really does make sense to be a people person and a very, a very attentive listener and just an overall enthusiasm to help people and provide a solution to a, to a problem. And you use the information you're given or the information that you can find to gain that sort of connection with someone and, and use that sort of data to make the best tailored um, uh, solution overall so that's that's what I believe I mean I personally when I first began in this in this industry and in this role I, I probably wouldn't say I was a salesperson I definitely grew into the role some people are natural salespeople who I've known uh, through in other industries and have grown in different areas and I know that there are other people that are more suited to more customer related um, roles so it really depends on your personality and your style and you, the best way is just to improve on your style and not to be someone that you're not. So you're saying you think salespeople can be made rather than they're born? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, it's like if you... I always like to compare it to, to football. Uh, it's like yeah. you always compare Messi and Ronaldo. You know, Messi, you, you always feel like he's probably got the more talent and then mm. Ronaldo is probably more of a, a worked player you know he, he trained and trained and trained not to say that Ronaldo didn't have that talent but that's probably where you could maybe differentiate the two and not to say that you know one's better than the other it's it's more to do so that you know they have their own sets of skills and how they use it and how they grow on those skills makes them a better player who's um off topic here but Messi or Ronaldo if you, if you <laughs> in that great debate oh well it's a, it's always a tough one. I I do appreciate watching them both, but the best way that I can explain it to any football fans listening is, I think Messi for me had more moments that took my breath away when I when I watched football. Yeah. I, I know Ronaldo had that bicycle kick that was just um, breathtaking for against Juventus and that was unreal but Messi you know even in that last World Cup just watching him even against Australia I'm sorry Aussies out there I'm sorry <laughs> I'm so sorry but that that performance was unbelievable and it's just yeah I think he had to overcome more more difficult challenges being such a small player and and living in um, the the little streets of um, Argentina where he was born yeah I think that World Cup for me just that like when he got that that's that that sign that sealed the debate for me, but <laughs> yeah, um, it was it made that argument tougher for Ronaldo mm, fans. That's for sure. I'm sure it will still keep rumbling on though. Um, 
Mate, back, back to business. Uh, going back to what you, know, you made, the, 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 the skills, the character traits you were talking about that you believe you bring to the table. The one that stood out for me, you mentioned, was enthusiasm. I think I said at the start of this, this, this show, I always saw you as this really you know, relentlessly positive, enthusiastic guy that just brought so much energy to every conversation, every encounter. I, imag I can just imagine you doing that with your customers. Where, where does that come from? Do you, have, have you always been like that? Yeah, gr great questions, and I appreciate uh, the, the kind words. Um, well, my, I asked, it's funny, when, when I had a reflection on, on these questions, I, I did ask my friends just to get a bit of a perspective from, from their look to see um, what they thought, and my friends normally call me Mushroom because I'm a fun guy. That's what some of them said. And all my life, I've been... Uh, I've enjoyed traveling around the world, experiencing different cultures. So I guess an example is how, how can you complain about Wi-Fi speed when there was a doorman without legs opening the door to a 7-Eleven asking for a 20 cent tip just so he can eat. That was when I was just uh, in, in my Mexico trip and there's just so much goodness in the world that you can't complain about the little things. You just gotta, you gotta see it as positive. And you can't be overwhelming, overwhelmingly positive because you can't be delusional either. There's got to be some yeah. sort of balance. And I guess, yeah, re reflect on a time where you were positive and another time you were negative. Which one was more attractive and beneficial? And that's a motto that, that I stand by. And on the second part, where does that come from? It's definitely got to do with my surroundings and the people I'm closing to, uh, closer to. And there was a video I watched recently of a successful businessman where he says, and I always repeat it because it just sticks with me. He, he says, you are the sum of the five closest friends you hang around with. And that, that stands out for me. You know, if you hang up with people that a negative or if you hang up with people that are positive you tend to move in that direction whether you want to or not it's just you kind of turn you, you tend to adapt and when you adapt it's you know an ever-growing area that you become used to and that's just the way it is so you you're almost attributing attributing it to other people you know the, the people you surround yourself with Absolutely, and they they definitely provide that guidance and and that help. And you you choose to hang around those people. It's never you're forced to hang around those people. So if you hang out with you know positive, inspiring people, you're going to be an in positive, inspiring people. It's just harder not to sort of adapt. And as a collective, uh, I guess my family have also been a deep force that drive the kindness that I've got. My dad would always constantly remind me to treat everyone the same, whether they're the janitor or the CEO of a company, with the same amount of respect. And love is only real when shared, so at the end of the day, you need to embrace it and you need to accept it. So is that something you consciously think about a lot? You know, right, who am I surrounding myself with? You know, who, are that, who are those five people I'm spent, I, you know, consciously spending time with the right people that are going to match my energy? Is that something you think about a lot then, do you think? Absolutely. And it comes down to what, what you want to achieve. What are your goals for the day? What are, you, what are your goals for the week? And then I used to hang around people who had that sort of negativity and had that sort of, you know, poor impact on my life. And I, I had to make a change. It wasn't you know, I don't like you anymore or I don't want to hang around with you. It's more, I'm going in a different direction. I'm wanting to do this. I want to hone myself. I want to be the best version of myself that I can be. And that's so contagious. I think, you know, if you use one word or if you use an action to provide that sort of evidence, I think you'll go a long, long way. We, we uh, you know, I described you as relentlessly positive, but I think, would it be fair to say you're not always like that, right? I guess you would have your moments where you're not always, you know, top of the world. You know, as you say, you don't want to be over the top with it. Is that fair? Oh, completely. And there's always going to be negative, a bad day is always going to be coming, whether it's, you know, loss of a, a relative or it could be Arsenal losing or it could be many, many things. But 
you, you know, I think you, you always need to have that sort of time to reflect and, you know, absorb that sort of feeling and use it in a positive way. And an example I can give is sometimes when I, I played a, a poor game in a sport or had just a, a really bad day at work, whereas things didn't go your way, I'd, I'd go to the gym just or I'd go for a run just to keep my mind off it and just essentially to move in that direction, use that negative to make it into a positive and recycle it in that sort of manner. And you never know. There's always been instances where that negative makes it into such a positive that it, you know, takes over your day. And that's very inspiring from, from, a, from, a, from my perspective. I always think like you need the negative experiences to make mm. the positive things better. Like the people who are always, if they expect everything, to, you know, to win every game or to be every day at work to be a great day, like when, because it's inevitable that the bad days or the bad results will happen, when they when do they happen, do. that it throws them off course because they're so set on everything must be perfect. So I think what you, maybe what you're getting at is like, just embrace the fact that things won't go well. Things won't always go to plan, but then just have the, the right sort of positive mindset to, to be able to brush it off and go again. Absolutely. No, spot on. And if you really look into it further, I've, on a personal level, I've learned way more from hearing negative feedback than from hearing positive feedback. Mm. It's too often you would hear people say, oh, you did such a great job, well done, and that's not a negative thing. But you've got to use constructive feedback or you've got to use examples just to push people. And I relate this maybe on my younger years where I had an incredible football coach and he didn't say many words at half time, but the words that he used to motivate us and to make that change, sometimes he would tell you at your face, you, you were poor today, you were awful. But I believe that you can overcome this by working on this or by working on that. This is what I would do in your situation. And then you gotta you got to develop it from using that sort of feedback and those comments to to push yourself you can't you can't be if someone tells you off in in any sort of aspect whether it's a business sense or sporting sense or a dating sense if someone if someone tells you off you can't be too down you can't go home and be like depressed i, I can't have that i i need mm -hmm. to be coming home i'm going to be using that and you know I'll, I'll, I'll be disappointed in myself and that's good and then you use that the next day or you use it you know in the next out in the next couple hours to to make something of it yeah, yeah. I, was, I was actually thinking about this this morning really enough like that that thing about feedback is and your ability to take feedback is is so important like and especially if it's you know critical feedback negative feedback um because i think just by design and by like nature we we don't like to hear it you don't know who likes to hear that they you know weren't that good today or whatever but it's mm. the best way to improve you know, and it's often the ego, I think, that's kind of, you know, there's nothing, you know, that's why we don't like to hear it. We think we're kind of too, you know, often the, the, the finished article or whatever. But then when you, when you really think about it, like, it's the best way to improve. And it, what often separates people, you know, the best people can take that feedback on board, really think about it um, and, and use it moving forward. Yeah, it's it's hard to disagree with you, Joe. It's really hard for me to disagree with you because it's 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 where I where I where I what I feel as well. And but the, you're right. There are many people who struggle to to understand and to deal with that sort of negative feedback or improvement. It's 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 almost arrogance. It's almost they're too good. Or why should I change if I've done a, a great job? A great job's great, but become excellent become extraordinary coach you know train like you you should never you should never stop pushing yourself and this yeah the arrogance of of people for even in even in your industry where in in recruitment i mean i'm sure you know, you have to tell a lot of candidates that uh, maybe they didn't get the role, or they weren't successful, and I'm sure maybe there's some scenarios where they didn't take it too well, or they kind of blamed everything but themselves, and that's so poor. You, you, 
there's only one person that you can blame and it's you and that's that's okay and that you know you, you got to use the the amount of feedback I've used from recruiters um, on interviews that have definitely improved my chances has been invaluable and you know it, you got to take it with the stride at the end of the day so we've, so we've touched upon the you know, present there quite a lot. We talked about you know what you've been up to and your, your current mindset and your current state. What what about the future? What does the future hold for Danny G? Like what what can I, what can I be expecting from you, mate, in the in the next few years? So, what the future holds? I don't actually know what the future holds, and that's mm. what makes it super exciting. Uh, this week I was working from home, listening to trance music. And then I get a message from you to join this podcast. So opportunities and change are all around us. So you've got to maintain a balance. But what I always ponder and what I always uh, think about is ensuring I put myself in the best position possible throughout the day. Um, bit like bit like chess. You know, I used to make ten calls a day. Make it make it the first task I complete to set myself myself up for a positive outcome. Long term. I'd be keen to be a senior account manager. Yeah. So I definitely, I do enjoy the industry. I definitely want to stay in that software tech space and get maybe, uh, you know, more responsibilities, you know, maybe a bit more pressure would be good because um, diamonds form under pressure, obviously. <laughs> but it's always, uh, it's I've always, I've always seen myself as a people person. I, I've always liked coaching, I've always liked training, I, I do like leadership uh, roles where I could potentially be managing a team and, and using that sort of positivity or that sort of um, strong impact to, to push people to be the best that they can be and who knows, that could be a, could be a toss up and to the future there's only, um, the limit is only your imagination and the journey is bound to be filled with laughter, learning and perhaps a few puns that's for sure so what are some of those mantras then that you're going to like take forward like what what are some of the things that you, i think you may have touched upon a few there but things you live by that that help you sort of you know get by your day and you know live live your sort of best life that you well, maybe with the, yeah. you know that you can share to the audience <laughs> well it, it costs nothing to be kind this you, there's so many little things that you can make a, a small difference. The, the other day, uh, maybe a year or so ago, I was on, I was just even on Instagram and I was doing like small vlogs saying, do something good today or do something that will make someone's day. And I, I started, it probably wasn't the best uh, best managing of it, but I started saying you know a polite thing to someone who I would walk by on my way to work and sometimes they would smile sometimes they would say something nice back and I've even had there's been a, an instance or two where I've I've seen them multiple times and have just become friends and it's funny because you you meet so many uh, different types of people from all walks of life and you you really just got to make the best of your chances because you, there's so much to learn there's so much to see so that's you know you put yourself in that situation and you know that's that's all I can ask to be kind you know there's there's too much there's too much hatred out there and if you can make one positive impact it's like a ripple and it it uh it definitely spreads out yeah small things but they can go a long way sometimes for sure spot on yeah so that would be my mantra there you go love it, love it mate. <laughs> um you touched upon your family actually a little bit a few times um i know they're important to you and i know you've got also some you know peruvian heritage right in your, in your family how do you feel that sort of maybe affected your you know who you are today or your upbringing would you say yeah absolutely so my for those that don't know my parents are both from peru uh, in south america they were born and raised there and then due to some terrorism and a few other factors they you know decided to um come to australia and although my mom says it was terrorism i low-key always think that it was her ambition to come to see this the australian beaches and to just get an amazing tan but we won't go into that <laughs> <laughs> but it was you know, living in difficult circumstances. And there was a story my mom told me that there were bomb threats where she was where she was working um, in, in the tourism industry. And 
there were situations where, you know, there were packages being dropped in a building. And, you know, Australia is such a beautiful country and, you know, doesn't, it, it's a bit more secure and has more, more out there to explore. So I believe a lot of what I get and what I learn from is, you know, that you've got so much opportunity out there to make the most of your day. So a lot of, a lot of my positivity and a lot of my, my enthusiasm I get from them that they work their asses off. They push themselves to, to raise, you know, a a family of five and to put up with, um, to put up with all of us and our cheeky selves and they raised us in, in, in a great area as well. So I was, I was very happy to, to be a part of, um, to be a part of that journey. And, you know, the, the end is not, not there just yet, but I'm sure that there's more amazing surprises to, to occur further down the track. Yeah. I love it, mate. Love it. Um, and mate, we, while we're catching up, we've got to talk, we've got to talk football. Um, <laughs> Of course. We talked a little bit before we were recording, um, you know, about uh, okay, I said commiserations on uh, Arsenal, sort of um, maybe bottling the title a bit. What, what, are your, <laughs> what, what are your thoughts on that? As, a, as I know, a, a big uh, Gunners fan. Oh, Arsenal, man! If anyone's an Arsenal fan listening to this, it's been, still is a tough twenty odd years not winning the league title. Although I, although we didn't win, and yeah, you could argue that it was bottled, and we did lose it and but at the end of the day uh, this year I was able to dream I was able to imagine what could what could be I even my boss actually happens to be a Tottenham supporter and I even told him look if if Arsenal win the league this year I'm going to take a few days off to celebrate with (laughs) with my friends and he's like yeah they yeah no worries you know they they won't win so I've got nothing to worry (laughs) about and then yeah I still don't hear the end of it at the moment, <laughs> and oh, I, I love, I've, I've always loved watching Arsenal kid, the Thierry Henry days of just, and the, and the football brand that, you know, that he's played, you know, possession, a bit of um, Tiki Taka, you would say, and some of the players brought in from such a young age to be developed and, and you know, brought, it's not that much, you know, you compare it to the team that we lost to this year, Man City, who... Won the Champions League uh, on Sunday, um, oh yesterday, and they've got an amazing squad, amazing players. Obviously, they spent a lot of money, and you know a lot of people say you know they spent billions, or you know a lot of clubs spent money. It's just how you use it and how you manage it. I think I, I read an article the other day even saying that Man United have actually had a, a larger net spend than Manchester City, and they don't have too much to show for it. So a little dig there, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, even fi- fini- at the end of the day, finishing second doesn't really mean much. But I-, I was proud of having the youngest team in the Premier League. You know, if if you told me at the start of the year that we were going to finish second, I would have been over the moon. So you- again, it's just how you view it, it's your perspective on on the season. And as an Arsenal fan, you always get you have to be positive, otherwise it's just gonna it's just gonna kill you even more. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah I I agree a little bit. I think I don't actually think Arsenal bottled it too much. I think they were just up against a, just a juggernaut of a team in <laughs> uh, in Guardiola City. Like they were just relentless chasing chasing them down. Um, but on, on a personal, I, I don't know if I got this right, but I saw on your your Instagram you you might have made a little transfer. You um, left your beloved. French's Forest. Uh, oh. Is it, is it, is it you signed for, for West Pimble, is it? Yeah, so I've there's been some personal changes in the last year. Mm. So I moved from moved out of home, bought a nice uh, uh, right. little place in in Gordon. So uh, oh, nice, I was right. playing football for Forest Killarney for oh, fifteen, no more, like twenty, eighteen years, I think, eighteen, nineteen years, and that uh, came to an end. And I've been playing for the West Pimble. Uh, side and they've been an amazing bunch of bunch of yep. guys very welcoming very cheeky and just a great culture no, no toxicity is that the word toxicity is that the word i'm looking for but it wasn't a toxic culture where i've, I've been in those sort of situations where it's it's more um you know swearing it's more it's it doesn't have that gentleman aspect to it. and of course i'm a i'm a gentleman or a gentle dan of course um 
So no, I've I've loved I've loved playing every minute of it. Um, yeah. So it's been it's been a good ride so far. What about yourself? Have you been playing a bit of football in in Melbourne? Yeah, but I've joined. I play for the uh, North Melbourne Trojans. Oh, um, very nice. Cur- currently, bottom of the league. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not going brilliant. Cut Cutler at centre half, shipping goals left, right. Centre. Oh goodness! Well, there are yeah. only ways up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, moving swiftly on from that. Um... <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you um, you mentioned briefly the the little mini vlogs you, you you've been posting. I think you might be referring to the Danny G Diaries. Is that right? <laughs> what, the what, famous... What's happened to them? I, I haven't seen them in a while. When are they uh, coming back? The Danny G Diaries. They're just small clips of of me providing or spreading some sort of positivity. Even today, it's a public holiday, and I did a little post saying, you know. Every, you know, people are sleeping or people are drinking, but I, you know, I'm here working. I mean, what, what are you making of it? And you know, I I always I always love to preach that sort of kindness, positivity, and even if I even I don't have many in, followers, but even if I manage to change or persuade one or two people to to make something of their day, I think that's that's an achievement in itself. So. That's that's what that sort of series was all about, you know, making a potential change. And I've had I've had good feedback from from those little clips there. Sometimes I'd have people saying, "You pu- you pushed me to go to the gym today," or I've had people say, "You know, thank you so much. I, I did this and that today." I think even one of them was probably on like a small relationship advice, not saying that I'm a relationship expert at all because I'm very single, but, uh, <laughs> but I, uh, <laughs> but I would say, just make, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make, make, <laughs> make that sort of, um, make that sort of move that don't, don't be, life is so short and this, you never know what can happen. You, you, you had COVID two years ago where we were, you know, at home for a couple of years, um, just not, you know, not doing too much. You had a lot of people who struggled and, and lost jobs. You never know what's around the corner. So you really just have to live in the moment. Mate, have you have you thought about posting your the Danny G diary to TikTok? <laughs> I haven't actually. I haven't really looked into that platform I think, as I much. I think that's I think it's the that's the platform for you, for you to be honest. <laughs> yeah, okay. look, I'll, I'll look into it. I I, I reckon with, with the TikTok side, I did recently read that they might be um, discontinuing it from Australia. I, I don't know if that's no, that, yeah. going to be moving forward, but if it does, maybe I might move into Reels or uh, what's what's the other one on Facebook? I think there's one on Facebook, but I I don't use it. But I I have seen some of yours, mate, and they're they're very they're very they're very clever. Yeah. So I have to maybe I've, get some inspiration from them. I've I've been having a bit of fun with TikTok the last year or so. So it's, <laughs> it's, I, I see you, I see you on there as well, mate. Don't yeah, worry. yeah. No, I I do watch uh, some videos there and there. It's just it's it's crazy though TikTok. I, I do think it's changed a lot of my attention span. So so much. It, it's. I don't know what it is. It's it's you know if something doesn't capture me in the first thirty seconds. Um, and I think that's a lot like sales. If if you're selling to a potential prospect and you don't capture their interest or their attention, yeah. they they move on. So yeah. I think TikTok and and the way that technology is moving moving ahead is is quite scary to be honest. And who knows? You've got AI. You've got so much happening, and you know you just got to keep up or you know be um potentially left behind yeah uh, great great point actually is it for your advice anyone who wants to kind of get involved would you say you know adapt these new technologies if especially if you're in sales oh uh, completely uh even uh, even ai you know using i know a friend of mine who's a software engineer and he's using chat gpt for for some codes and to to simplify a lot of things, but, but I also I always I I also asked him, mate, are, are you worried that you know AI could potentially take your role? And he said, yeah, I'm very concerned. It's it's a real possibility, and you know we always got to be be careful of that because I think with sales, it's it's hard it's hard for AI I believe to take that sales and that emotional aspect of it. So I, I always think there's going to be um, some roles in, in there, but. If you get left behind of using TikTok or using, you know, videos or yeah. you know, 
or um, different mediums to to capture someone, you, you're really gonna you're really gonna slip. And before it was, I'll, I'll give you an, uh, an amazing example. I believe so before it was a lot of door knocking. How often do you see door knocking in sales now? It's gone. And who uses newspaper ads these days to for for jobs? I mean, who, not many people use Seek these days. I mean, it's all mostly LinkedIn. Well, that's what I'm seeing. So that there's so much that you really need to to be to be aware of and and use um, that sort of um, those sort of mediums to to excel. Adapt or die, baby. <laughs> Absolutely. Otherwise, <laughs> who knows what will happen? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Mate, I've got one final question for you. you know, this hopefully wraps things up quite nicely. And it's a question I tend to finish up, you know, on, on the episodes on this show. And you can take this whichever way, you know, where you like personally, professionally. But it's around the idea of success. So I want to know and understand a little bit more what success means to Danny G. Success means to Danny G. That is a great question. And for me, it comes down to three key things. So health, your family and your friendships, and money. I think you need, you need to maintain a, a good steady level of all three of them. It's just finding that sort of balance and that sort of arrangement between all three that is the toughest part, I think, of, yep. of life or, or of success. You know, if you have too much money and... You know, you, you have minimal relationship with your family and your friends. You know, you, you've got all that gold, but who are you going to be there to share it with? And I think the best moments of your life, or of my life so far, have been with other people. Um, I do enjoy being by myself and would consider myself an ambivert in the middle. However, mm. you know, th those moments that take your breath away tend to be with, with, with family and friends. And obviously, you've got your health. You can't, you know... I love, you know, going for a drink with a friend or catching up for drinks, but if you're constantly drinking or if you're, you know, constantly doing other things, you've, you're really putting your health and you're really minimizing or reducing your, your potential, you know, life expectancy. So you've got to, you've got to be conscious of that. And, you know, if, I, I've always been a very, I've been a health advocate, you know, going to the gym, eating, eating clean, eating well, having that. Um, sort of social sport side of things, whether it's football, whether it's playing some tennis, um, or it just you know staying active in general, it's it's so important. It just it it you know, it all comes together, and it's it's so transferable. It's it's they're all transferable skills that you, that you use in everyday life. If you're running away from police, you need to have a good good cardio. So you you need to work on your cardio if that ever happens. Otherwise, they'll catch you. <laughs> um, so it's always it's always um you know hit and run um if you must say. So it's those three pillars, and it's about maintaining, you know, making sure that the. Yeah, you're you're doing your best, I guess, with all three of those. And, and if one slipping, say, right, maybe I can lo lose a bit more of one pillar and try and transfer to that one, or just trying to have the balance between those three. Is that is that right? Yeah, yeah, completely. You got to maintain that balance and in, ensure that overall, you can't. I don't think you should be using those pillars just to for your own happiness. Sometimes it's you got to do it for what's best for, for your family or what's best in yeah. the current situation. Sometimes you got to, sometimes you do have to put yourself second and that's okay. And we're all here to, to make the most of what you can do and, and what you can achieve. Danny G, thank you very much for coming on the show. What an episode, what a chat, what a guy. I really appreciate you coming on uh, and sharing, you know, your, your, your wisdom, your knowledge, your attitude. I absolutely love it. I uh, appreciate it as a friend and I appreciate the, the catch up. Mate, Danny G. You guys are too kind. Thank you so much. Uh, Joe will have to catch up when you're next in Sydney or when I'm in Melbourne. And yeah, it's been a, a good little chat. I've, uh, I've loved it. I can't wait to, to hear it and, and to, to share it around. Love it, mate.